Hi, I'm Catherine, and this is Tanner, and we are 1915 Farm, and we're going to go do some morning chores. First stop is the chickens. We're going to get them all fed, and we're going to move their tractor forward so they get fresh pasture. So at 1915 Farm, we raise beef, pork, and chicken, and we sell it direct to consumer, all through shipping and home delivery. We started with two cows, uh, two pigs, and like eight chickens, you know, and now we're doing about 700 chickens a year, 25 pigs and 20 cattle to finish, so. When these chickens, when they're raised, where they have plenty of room to move, meaning not in confinement, we don't have to give them drugs because they're not living in their own manure. No drugs, no antibiotics, no hormones, nothing. We can just have them live out on the land and really thrive. So this is where our laying hens, like the big chickens that y'all see, lay all their eggs. Hey, ladies. And these guys, they go wherever they want to. They also choose where they want to lay their eggs. So it's kind of like an Easter egg hunt every day sometimes. Our animals are outside on pasture just about 100% of the time. It's so important to make sure that they eat right and have um, the right nutrition so we don't have to lean on antibiotics, so we don't have to lean on drugs, so we don't have to lean on hormones, which are so commonly used in today's um, meat that's produced at a mass scale. Hey, piggies! And so we, we're really particular about the breeds we raise, too. Um, so we raise heritage breeds. Um, they used to be much more popular back in the day, but um, America started breeding a leaner pigs. But what we do is we raise the old-fashioned breeds, which are known to produce just delicious pork. So cattle are super easy for us because they're grass-fed, grass-finished. So we just put them out on grass and pasture and let them do their thing. <laughs> These piglets here are one day old, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were born uh, yesterday about 3 a.m. when we turned to uh, teaching ourselves how to artificially inseminate. And this was our first attempt at AIing. And yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. Mama's still pretty tired after having these babies because only a day old. She had. Um, eight this go around and then one was stillborn so that's pretty common with pigs it's kind of why they have such big litters and so we've got seven little healthy guys and gals yeah this is gypsy so all of our animals that aren't gonna eventually um be meat we name <laughs> they're by far my favorite so we we're trying to come up with a name for the farm i happen to be working in the attic one one night and I just happened to shine my flashlight on a beam in the attic that night and it was a signature in pencil that said September 1915. And I was like, 1915? I'm like, we gotta name it 1915 Farm. Back in 1915, they raised animals the way we do, out on pasture and in their natural environments. So it kind of all perfect. ties together. I love it. Yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> We bought the property and we redid the house. And to start the actual farming piece, to begin with, this used to be a farm. And so we got educated on where our food came from, mainly through Netflix. Watching the food documentary really just changed the course of our life, mainly just because it made us think about it. We started raising our own meat. We told people about it and they wanted some of our meat as well. And so that's really what started it. You know, throughout the journey, people have told us, um, like you're not doing it right, like pe people don't do it that way, that's what hippies do or, or whatever, but we just kind of thought well, we'll do what makes sense to us and we'll, we'll try to do it the way nature intended, not the way it's currently done. We're going to raise them more humanely, we're going to raise them sustainably to where they're outdoors on pasture, just getting to live a really good life to where we don't depend on any shortcuts like antibiotics or hormones. So we decided uh, we wanted to move out of the city and find, you know, five to 10 acres. We ended up with 57 acres and a free house. Our whole story really starts with this house and with this land. Our realtor brought us out here and was like, I have the deal for you. There's actually way more land than what you were looking for and it comes with a free house. And so Dan and I are like, yes, let's go look at it. We can't wait. And let's just say it was free for a reason. The best way I can describe it was, Driving through the gate was like the opening scene of a horror movie. The house just looked like creepy. There's an old chain link fence. 
we like walk to the back and you just hear like and I'm like there is somebody sitting in a rocking chair back there waiting on us. And I remember leaving and I was like Tanner what do you think and he's like no way and he's like what do you think and I was like I kind of like it and um, it took some convincing but I think he was able to see the big picture um, and then that's when we decided to buy it. We had a good relationship with the local bank that lended us the money for the, the loan and acquired it that way. We didn't have much expectations. We just wanted to be out on land. We wanted to feel closer to nature, I guess. We started with just the cash we had in our bank and we made do with what we had. We, somehow just with just a will, we've just made it, we've made it work. We went the first winter uh, without heat. Um, we didn't get AC until June of that following summer. Um, we got married in between that time period. So coming home from our honeymoon with uh, no walls and a window unit. <laughs> it really taught us to appreciate refrigeration, heat. <laughs> yeah. um, we shared a mini a meal on a cardboard box made out of a microwave. Just a lot of things you take for granted. We took about two and a half, three years mm -hmm. to really finish the house. All the remodeling uh, we actually did ourselves. We gutted the whole house. We did the electrical, the plumbing, insulation. We redid the floors. We took walls out. We put new studs in. A lot of the elements you've seen here are original from this property. The barn wood came from the old 100-year-old barn that had to be torn down. There was a smoke shack outside that also wasn't um, salvageable, so we were able to bring the tin inside. So we wanted to put a wood-burning stove in to just make it cozy and unique. Some of the hurdles were just sifting through regulations, um, just to know that what we were doing was legal. A lot of it is figure out as you go when it comes to raising animals. You know, keep in mind, we don't have a farming or agriculture background. Like pharmaceutical sales is about the furthest way you can get from a farm. And then Tanner was in oil and gas. We thought about, okay, you know, what are the main food groups when it comes to meat? Beef, pork, and chicken. So the advice is to get really good at raising one of those animals. But Tanner and I, we just jumped in feet first and we got all three. It was a madhouse for um, a while, but it's just the beauty of not only Google and teaching yourself, but learning from your mistakes, um, leaning on other people that have more experience, getting on the phone, meeting people. The other thing about raising animals that nobody tells you <laughs> is your mistakes have long-term repercussions. So Catherine was in pharmaceutical sales. Like if she had a bad sales call yesterday, well, she gets to do it again tomorrow. Well, that's not how it is with animals. With cattle, 30 years of experience, and if you're finishing in two years, that's only 15 different tries. The most important lessons we learned about business is, but what so many consumers don't know and are now learning is when you raise animals in their natural environment, it's more expensive. We needed to just set up our business model to be profitable. And that can be hard too, because you want to make your meat um, just as cheap as possible, just so everyone will, will we'll buy it. That's kind of like your thought in the beginning, but then you really start thinking about it and you're like, look, you know, our customers, they prioritize this, they put a value on it, and and so they will pay more to be able to eat this way. And so that that's what we learned from the very beginning is just is just to be confident and to be proud. The old saying that cheap food isn't good and good food isn't cheap. <laughs> The way the process works is we raise all of our animals on farm and then we, we haul them to a either a USDA or state inspected processor um, for that one bad moment they have. And it's frozen and it's packaged and it's stamped and it's safe. And so we pick up all the frozen meat and the way that we distribute most of our meat is through shipping um, along with a home delivery program. They just go order as much meat as they want. They pick and choose cuts and then we ship out every single week. They not only know where their food comes from and trust it, it, but trust us as well because they feel like they personally know us. So that's really important to us. That's number one, really, is for people to, the know, like, and trust factor. To be that almost like source where people can ask questions, people can come see the farm. Like, how do you raise your animals? Why do you raise them that way? Because there's just not any transparency um, when it comes to buying your meat from the, meat from the grocery store. Um, you just don't know the way those animals were raised. We live in a time where people wanna know where their food comes from. They wanna just rest assured on the way those animals were raised because at the end of the day, that's what we're feeding not only ourselves, but our families. People are almost having less, not as big houses, but also just 
buying quality. And I think that's, an, we live in an awesome time for that in 2019, to see it come full circle. The best thing about seeing our dream come to fruition is really just to step back and see what you've built. To sit outside like on the porch and just be able to talk with your spouse about what all we did that day, your dreams, where you want to go to, and just how we want to impact more people and more animals. And so that's been one of the best things about starting not only this farm, but this business with your spouse. Being out in nature is just healing. It allows you to just take a step back and not get caught up in the hustle and bustle of daily life. Living on land just gives you a different way of life, which is so beautiful. You learn to appreciate the seasons more, in my opinion, just when the leaves are putting on their buds at the beginning of springtime. The beautiful thing about land, too, owning land, is you can preserve it the way you see fit and uh, really honor the story that the land has. And it's not an infinite resource. Like, they're, they're not making any more of it. And it is just taught us so much more appreciation to be just appreciative for just what you have. And it's just so beautiful to be outdoors and in nature and slow down, not get caught up in the rat race. Landio. Land is opportunity.